Okay, just waiting for a few more people to come in. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, um, welcome. Uh, welcome this afternoon to our um, final session in the alumni career series. Um, I'd like to welcome James Kennedy uh, for our, I, which is great to have him back for the second workshop on um, telling your story authentically with a focus today on um, interviews and a recap on the CV session. Um, James is an HR director for Thurman Company based um, out of um, Houston in, in Tesco. In Tesco. Tescus. <laughs> Making up a new country. I can't say it. <laughs> no, I've been rushing around in, in US of A. <laughs> um, and he also runs his own transition um, company, which is transitioning uh, career professionals. Um, he's had 20 years of experience managing and supporting projects within the financial services, the hospitality, and the uh, civil nuclear energy uh, industry. And he's now using his experience to help a career. Um, transitioners uh, um, better understand the job searching process, um, particularly from a hiring manager's perspective. So he's here to give us his advice and tips this afternoon. And um, again, welcome, James. Thank you very, very much, Molly. And hello, everyone, my fellow Brooks alumni in the, in the room here, right? So uh, just to let you know, uh, you know, in terms of what we're doing today, uh, uh, Put your questions in the chat and I will try to answer, ask them as much as possible, right? I'm not here to, you know, just talk and, and hear myself, the, the sound of my voice. Well, I like it. That's okay. I'm here to help you guys, right? You know, wherever you are on the journey and, and uh, wherever you are, bring me the questions you got as I'm talking through this and I will do my best in the time we've got available to go through this, okay? Now, here's my question to everyone first off. Where are you, where you, where are you uh, calling in from? I mean, are, are most of you all in the UK or are you around the world? Can you add in the chat and let me know, please? Where are you calling in from, from around the world? Okay, and as you're doing that, I just wanted to add to what Molly's saying is, you know, as an international career coach, hi, Tamiris, thank you very much for uh, Oxford, right? Spain, hola, hola from Spain there, Lagos, Nigeria, what's happening, Nigeria, right, great stuff, Canada, Kent, oh my goodness, we're going international here, great stuff, <laughs> right, not the Kent bit, I was talking about Canada and everybody else, but thanks, Alex, thanks for joining us, right, so what I want to say is wherever you are in the world, right, and I want to say to you guys on this call, I've helped people all the way in the US, Canada, right, uh, uh, Zambia, talk to some clients in Nigeria, uh, uh, or Lusea, but I haven't, uh, no one's decided to work for me from Nigeria yet, right? But I've helped people around the world, okay? Because the thing that I understand and I want to share with you people today, right? And if you haven't seen the first recording, people, please watch the first recording because what I'm talking about today, I will do a recap in a second, but what I'm talking about today follows on from the first one, okay? Now, what I'm teaching you as well, okay, is coming from 20 years of trial and error, Right. So, you know, some of you guys looking for jobs and you know very well that it's tough out there. It's always been tough in the, in the market. Right. But especially now in the middle of COVID and the pandemic and everything and uh, lots of companies trying to, you know, stay afloat, trying to find a job is even harder now. OK. And so what I want to do is share this experience with you to try and help make your journey that a little bit easier as well. OK. So to try and do that. Right. I want to give you a recap of the uh, the CV session talked about before. Go and watch it if you haven't seen it yet, but I'm just going to quick one on that, okay? So what I say to people is, right, uh, when, you, when, you, when you choose to, to watch a movie on Netflix or, or, thing, or when you're looking to read a book, one of the things you do first before you do that is you, you know, check out the summary, watch the preview. You know, you look at the back of the book to see if the book that you're reading, okay, is interesting to you, right? So what I say to people is, and if you read the book and it's not interesting, okay, you will put it back and you get another one, right? And that's on the CV. So again, people, that's normally how it is, right? And anyone tells me, wants to tell me different, you let me know, right? But, but what I want to say to that is when people are looking at your CV for the first time, especially hiring managers, okay, that are very, very busy, right? And you've applied for the job and next to your CV, there's a whole line of other hundreds of CVs as well. Okay, so the importance of first impression, guys. 
if I read it in the beginning, even the first half page, and it's not exciting to me, next, because I've got another 99 to go to, okay? Just to give an example, right? Because I said, I'm the HR director for a project management consultancy based out in Texas. I'm here based in the UK. So just to let you know, international working can work if you find the right company to believe in, right? Um, and uh, we put up an ad for a job, Molly. We put up an ad for a job. It was only for three days because we had to switch it off because we had already had 50 plus CVs from 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 applicants in only three days okay yeah. Yeah. so when you like if you think of uh, uh companies out there that have their um the add-on for two weeks three weeks if three days gets me 50 cvs imagine what two three weeks can do okay and yours people is only one of all of those stuff right so what i say to people is to try and make sure that you know i call it the highlight section your uh, you know if you guys had finished your uh finished doing your your thesis and and uh, dissertation right it'll be your executive summary right and the way you do that is to put in a um a key accomplishment or a key achievement section, right? You have your profile statement of who you are and what you're looking for. And then normally people go traditionally into the education if you're just finishing a student or they go into the experience they have. My, while, while my suggestion and what I'm saying to people, right? You have your profile statement and underneath it, you have a key accomplishment section, right? Now the key accomplishment section, what you wanna do, because I say to people, a job description, if you think about it, is a list of problems, right? It's a list of problems that the company that's put it out there needs somebody in to fix those problems. Okay. So if you understand that, then you need to know that you need to convince the hiring manager that you are the best person to come in and fix those problems. Right. And so, as I talked about in the first webinar, is go look at the job description. Give me some of the keywords that they, th that they got in there. Now, the keywords, I want you to think about the keywords as problems. I want to say problems stakeholder engagement, communication, teamwork, okay? Especially for you guys who just finished uh, university and might not have a lot of work experience. You want to think about any uh, uh, charity work you've done, right? Any voluntary work you have done, right? Because when you're doing voluntary work, you're doing work uh, in a business environment. You can get some examples that you can put in your CV, right? Any coursework and teamwork and group work that you've done, you need to bring that in there as well, okay? If that's all you got, you got to use what you have, right? The other thing I have as well is um, use. So, so all these keywords are problems. So if, if they need someone to, to uh, help with uh, teamwork, use that as your header. Teamwork is the problem, right? And then you give me an example of a problem you fixed, right? We talked about using the STAR method and I'll talk about it further for the interview as well, right? Give me the problem and give me the result. Problem and the result that you fixed, okay? Because when I can understand your value, when I can understand what you can do to me for me based on the problems I have, okay? So the job description is your cheat sheet, right? Based on the problems I have, then I can, then I can see how you can come in and help me with my problems, right? So there's a hundred CVs out there. And, and, and like I said, I'm a hiring manager. I am already always looking at uh, reviewing uh, CVs on a daily basis, right? And if I talk to my fellow managers out there looking at CVs, right? It's one of the most painful experiences in the world, reviewing people's CVs, okay? Because most CVs that I see is people talking about themselves. Hmm. The CV is not about you, people. Let me say that again. The CV is not about you. It's about how you can come in and help me with my problems in my company. Okay? So make it easy, right? You have a key achievement section. You can talk about, you know, four or five keywords about some of the things you've done in your past. And show me what you can do for me. That'll be easier, right? You know, you've all got degrees or, you, you know, you're studying your degrees. That's great. That's brilliant. But on top of all of that, you also have experience, right? So show me what, you know, and, and you know, it's a group work, you know, any voluntary work, right? Any organizations you've been part of, right? You know, in the, you know, different student bodies and everything. There'll be things you've done in there. There'll be problems if you fixed in there that you can come in and talk about, okay? Now, before I go and talk about how this can go into the elevator pitch, 
any questions, give it to me in the post, in the uh, chat, and I'll uh, try to ask it and move on. All right, carry on with that. I'm going to just keep on speaking, and I'll get back to those when I can. Right, so today, right, the question is, and Molly quite rightly talked about, how can your CV help you in the interview, right? Now, I want to talk to you about, like, so in the past, I've been a uh, operations manager in a insurance company for over 10 years, right? So what that means is uh, on a daily basis, I'd have to, uh, as the operations manager, I'd have to deal with my team of up to 20 people, okay? And I'd also, uh, I get all the great complaints, right? All the problems that everybody else uh, couldn't deal with gets moved up to the hiring manager. So part of my day is, is, is pretty much looking after my team, uh, putting out fires as they say, right? And dealing with my senior managers and being the bridge between senior management and my team, right? And looking after them, okay? And dealing with complaints and dealing with customers when my team can't deal with it as well, right? So what I'm trying to say to you is managers on a daily basis, especially now in the middle of everything that's going on, are super, super busy, right? So like I said, is, is uh, uh, and then, you know, the email will come up to say, oh, you've got 15 minutes till the next uh, interview, right? So we'll print off your CV sometimes, you know, and then give us a quick scan through, right? Before the interview itself, all right? So again, question for you guys there on the go, all right? Interviews, how do you feel about interviews? How confident are you in interviews, okay? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being amazing, 10 being confident, Give me a number between one to 10 of how confident you are in interviews, okay? Give me the number, then I can see where you are, and then I'll tailor this, um, uh, this, uh, this chat today accordingly, based on where you are, right? So that I can try and give you guys value, give you guys what you guys need to hope for. Six there from uh, Olusei. And, and first off, I'm saying it up front, if I'm butchering anybody's name, that's my fault. There's nothing to do with you guys, and I apologize in advance, okay? <laughs> right? So I've got a six from Olusei there. All right, anybody else? Come on, people. We've got nine people in this uh, attendee so far. Give me your questions. This is not right, right? Six there from Alex. Thank you, Alex, right? Brilliant, okay? Now, seven, Tamir is in. Yeah, that's a question mark in there. Great, great stuff, okay? So good, right? So six, seven, great, right? Now, what I wanna say to you as a question, right? Another question on top of what you guys are giving me so far. When you meet someone for the first time, Okay. How long does it take for you to have an impression in minutes? Give me how many minutes when you meet someone for the first time to say, yeah, I get this one. Or say, no, this one's, uh, th th this one's completely different for what I'm not used to, right? So how long does it take to create an impression of someone you meet for the first time to say, do you like them or you don't like them or you're not sure about them? Give me like you now one, two, one minute, two minutes, five minutes. Put it in there, add it in there, okay? Now, the reason why I say that, okay? Two minutes, see, Alex says two minutes, right? Right, right, two, three minutes, right? I go, thank you very much. Or you say one minute, see? The other thing is it doesn't take that long, people, to create an impression of when we meet someone for the first time, right? That's human nature. We can't help it. That's human nature, okay? So again, as I said, CV, the, the, the importance of first impression right? In an interview, it's exactly the same thing, the importance of first impression, right? And when we like someone, okay, we're, when we see that this person is similar to us, we're more likely, we're more likely to forgive them later on, right? So in interview, sometimes we're going to make mistakes, that's, you know, uh, and it's not the most natural states that we're in, okay? Right, and from the sixes and sevens, I got it's not the most natural states that we're in. So if we know that, all right, we need to make sure that we're working on our, uh, our um, what I call the elevator pitch, right? And for those who didn't, don't understand what the elevator pitch means, it means that if you go from the bottom floor to the top floor of a building, okay, as the example talks about, right, you have that much time, two minutes, one, two minutes to make a great impression, okay? And then from there, they'll decide if they want to hear more or not. Right now, I'm telling you here as a hiring manager, I'm going to interviews and I'm meeting people. I'm always trying to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I know which uh, you know people are nervous, and I'm trying to help them as well. Okay, but one of the biggest questions that people hate, right, is the tell me about yourself question right in the beginning, and it's supposed to be an icebreaker. 
and it's supposed to help you relax, <laughs> right? Can anyone tell me in the room if anyone really likes that question? Tell me about yourself. <laughs> Molly shaking her head, okay, <laughs> right? Anybody, anybody like that question? Say yes if you can and no if you're not, right? And if there's no answer, I'll assume that's a no from the people I've got for, right? Right, definitely, Thamiris, right? Tell me about yourself is one of the worst questions that I used to hate as well before, okay? Now, and a lot of people say no. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you, Thamiris, right? A lot of people say no a lot, right? But here's what I want to tell you guys, right? In terms of making a great first impression, right? The tell me about yourself question is a free question. It's the only question in an interview where you get to decide and choose the direction of where the, the conversation is going to go, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you have a CV that they've received and you have key accomplishments on there, okay, or key achievement, it's just words, but you choose which one works for you, right? And you're highlighting four or five examples of accomplishments and achievements that you've done in the past, okay? Those are part of the reasons why you got the interview in the first place. Make sense? Because your CV goes to them, they've seen it. Yes, I see what Tamir is saying. I see what Alu say. Yes, I want to. Be, I want to meet this person. Okay, because something in there talks about when we when we talk about in the CV about give me the problem, give me the result. The how is missing because we deliberately leave the how out of the problem and the result. So it comes in and you talk about it. Okay. Now when I say what I talk about that is. You use that to your advantage. The CV has helped you to get the interview. In the CV, in the interview itself, apologies, right? You're repeating back to them what's already on the CV. But I will show you a format as we're talking about and how we do this, right? Now, uh, for someone like myself that has a lot of uh, uh, different careers, right? I've, in 20 years, I've changed careers seven times, right? Seven times in 20 years. So I'm telling you it's possible when you know how. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of me was stumbling all the way through and I learned everything I'm teaching you the hard way. OK, there's a lot of time in between and there was a lot of time stuck in jobs I didn't want to do. Any. I'm hoping that when you understand this, you take this concept, it makes it easier for you guys. Right now. Uh, uh, one. So I, I always say to people, step one, when you give the uh, when you're speaking to them, look at the job description. Look at the uh, company website, understand what you know a little bit about the company to see how you can connect it all together, right? Now, from my uh, CV, when I'm speaking to people, they already know that uh, I'm all about process improvement, right? And if you think about it, the CVs and the interviews is I've already just looked at process improvement. How can I make this faster, quicker, and easier for people? And I'm still doing process improvement, even as a CV person, right? And then as career coach, okay? So when I say to that, it's just a the first part you're talking about, and I go through it in an example in a minute, right? I talk about a theme throughout my whole career of what I'm interested in, right? That's related to what they need you to do in the job because you're changing your story to match what they need. It's not about you. It's what you can do for the company, remember, right? So when I say to that, it's like, uh, I'll tell people, okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, you know, throughout my whole career, one of the underlying themes through all of it is all about process improvement. Okay, so I'm giving a theme up front on how to tie all my stories in together, right? And I'll talk about, for example, in one of my previous roles, when I went in there, okay, the uh, resource process for projects used to take five days. And, the, uh, and, and uh, you know, within uh, two months of me being with, uh, being with the company, I managed to reduce that by 80% and down to one day, okay? In another company, Okay, I worked in where there was no, uh, there were, they didn't have a risk process in place, right? And I managed to convince uh, senior managers in all the different departments to come and uh, the benefit of coming together on a weekly basis to talk through all these different risks, okay? So I'm giving examples of things I've done that's already on the CV that's relevant for what they're talking about, okay? But again, if you see what I'm talking about here, I'm talking about the problem and I'm talking about the result. I'm not talking anything about the how just yet, okay? So two, three examples of things you've done in the past that's you know, tied to the theme you've talked about and also tied to um, what they need, right? Job description, guys, is your cheat sheet. Look at what they have, 
look at what's going on and figure out what you've done in the past that's relevant for what they need, okay? And so I tie it up by, um, by like, for example, some of the projects I've worked on, it's a new project team they've put together, right? So one of the implications of a new project team put together, they don't have processes in place. They're still working things out, right? I have experience of that, okay? So I said, you know, I, I'll talk about, you know, what, um, as I said before, one of my, um, uh, what, was, what did I say? You know, uh, one of the things, to, uh, one, one recurring theme throughout my career is process improvement, right? Uh, one example is this, two examples this, another example of this, right? And, and this is why, you know, I know that, uh, that your company is creating a completely new project and, you know, and the implications of that is there's going to be, you know, new processes, uh, new systems, uh, new ways of working that you need to embed within the team, right? As someone that has all this experience, I'm, I'm confident and can, I can come in and make that transition quicker and smoother. Okay, so again, just highlight there. Recurring theme about uh, what you like that's relevant for what they need, right? Two, three examples of achievements that you've done that's relevant for what they need and wrap it up by showing something you know about the company, right? And connecting what you can do, matching what the company needs, okay? And that there, ladies and gentlemen, is an elevator pitch. Questions, bring it in here or we wait till the end. I don't mind, I, I just go with the flow. All right, uh, and that's the elevator pitch, right? Now, the other thing I wanna to say to you is interviews, okay? As a manager, as a manager people, two things I look for when I'm recruiting staff. A, can they do the job, all right? Can they do the job? Two, can I work with this person? Right? Because if I'm having to look after people, my thing in my head is, can I work with them? Right. So what I want to say to that is, yes, we need to stand out, but we need to also show how we are like them, like the hiring director team. So they said, OK, I can see how this person fits into ours. Right. And so one of the things I want to talk about uh, um, in there is how to tell your story in an interview. OK, so most interviews at the moment that I've been on. Right. Yes, there's going to be some weird and awkward questions. Right. And depending on the company, that's just where they do things. Right. But the majority of uh, the majority of uh, interviews I've been on are normally competency based questions. Right. When I say competency based questions. Right. They're asking things like, can you give me an example of having to deal with a difficult situation? Can you give me an example of uh, dealing with a difficult colleague? Right. These are types of things, because what they want to see is how do you uh, perform and your thought process on dealing with specific problems and specific situations. Right. So as I talk about that and I see that is what I want to talk to you is, you know, uh, I'll talk about the star method. Right. So if you don't know what the star method is, ladies and gents, OK, it's, it's just a framework on how to tell your story. Right. And some people hate it because they think it's too confined. They think it's, uh, uh, you know, doesn't give them freedom, right? To express themselves, right? And, and, and what I'm trying to say is you need to understand from the hiring manager's perspective, okay? Sometimes they have an hour to make a decision of whether you're the best person for the role and whether I can uh, work with you, right? And, and if you go into big companies, right? There's rules and, uh, you know, there's ways we have to do this that HR set out to make sure that we're doing the process as fairly as possible. Okay, so what I'm saying for that is that we use the STAR method, right? And, and you know, I've been, I've been on uh, interviews where the HR will give us the questions that we have to ask to ensure compliance. And in the, in the questionnaire is the question on the top, and there's four stages that STAR written out, situation, task, action, result. OK, because it's just an easy way for them to take notes and it's an easy way to compare this person with the other one based on how they answered the questions. Right. So when I talk about star, right, I want to explain to people that you are the you are the superstar. Right. You need to show them that you are the superstar. You're coming in and you're going to make a difference. Right. But but based on facts, based on things you've done and how you can help them. Right. So for those of you that don't know, the STAR format is just an acronym that says S, situation, right? Situation, what's the problem? Always thinking problems because you're a problem solver, right? 
What's the problem? Can you give me an example of problem? Say, okay, uh, situation is what's the problem? The task, okay, what you had to do, what was the objective, right? The actions. In an interview, the actions is everything you did to fix the problem, okay? And then the result. The R is the result. And I always say to people, the result is the so what, right? It's the same thing carried on from week one. So you can see how it flows through. The so what, people, right? Now I say to people, for businesses, okay, there's three common things that every business has, right? As objectives, okay? They need to make money. They need to save money. So process efficiency, process, uh, uh, you know, uh, pr uh, process improvement uh, and all that, uh, okay? And they need to uh, meet regulatory requirements, okay? Because if they don't meet government guidelines, the government can find them, uh, you get bad press, lose money, right? And you could eventually be closed as well, right? So if you think about it, the three common things with any company is make money, save money, right? Process efficiencies and avoid paying money out. So it's all about money at the, at the end of the day, right? Regardless of the job, that's what a lot of them are looking for, okay? So how can you come in and increase the value and ensure that, right? Now, give you an example, okay? So if someone says to me, can you give me an example of uh, uh, you know uh, improving a process, right? And I'll talk about the example I talked before, right? So the this you can say that, and I use the keywords there, the star words. I use it in the interview to help me remember, right? So there was a situation where I came in and the process was taking five days on a monthly basis, right? And uh, uh, so uh, over the course, uh, you know, I, uh, my objective was look at the my my objective, right? My task was to, to analyze the problem and look and see how I could make it even uh, better and faster, right? So over the, uh, uh, over the two months, I spoke to the different stakeholders, right? I had uh, meetings to do some evidence gathering, right? And understand what the pain points were, okay? And through all of that, I, I was able to uh, implement a new process, right? that I rolled out to everybody else, okay? Now, all the things I'm talking about here is great and stuff, right? But as I say to all my clients, so what? You did all this work, so what, guys, right? And what I wanna say to that is you want to link in how the actions and the things that you've done either help to ma uh, make sales, uh, either help to um, uh, reduce costs or meet regular requirements, okay? Because that's how you can show them, wow, this person helped to do this in the past. Maybe they can help do this for me, okay? Now, for some of you might not have a lot of uh, work experience. Obviously, you're just students, you're just coming out. You might not even go into your first job, right? That's why I've spoken to Molly before. It's important to have some experience like uh, voluntary work. Okay, because that's where you can get work experience examples from, right? If you're part of a student society, student society, right, is there, there's always going to be problems, right? So when you look at problems, analyze and fix the problems and see, okay, for example, if a process used to take an hour and you managed to reduce it down to 30 minutes, right, that's a 50% process efficiency. Turn it into percentages. Show them how you made it, pro, uh, you know, quicker, faster, more efficient, right? Same with anything else. If you can use the percentages, even better. Okay, uh, Molly, I'm just looking at the time. I'm just checking. Is there any specific questions you want to ask me at this time, or do I just go with it? Um, I think well, we've we. I mean, that's all really interesting. I've I've, I've been I've been taking notes. <laughs> um, um, I think that's it's good. I mean, the elevator pictures when you, we were talking at the beginning would be something you would would you link that into? I was just thinking, would they link that into? Tell me more about yourself, or is that yes. that, that would be that? Yes, sort of yes, yes. So, so the elevator be that introductory bit yes. about yourself, exactly. And then, right. The, the these you know there's I suppose there's other type of questions you might get yes but, most definitely and and give me some questions if you guys have some questions by interview type questions give it to me in the post and I'll help you as well right and great question so so uh, basically what I'm saying guys right tell me about yourself is where you use your elevator pitch right now when it's done correctly guys because you, you see what I'm thinking is you're talking about problems of things you've done in the past that's relevant for what they need. Right? Again, we haven't talked about the how, right? And so if I know from the job description that you need all these things and I'm telling you that this is what I've done in the past, right? 
one, if done properly, one of the follow-on questions is, wow, that's very interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Can you tell me a bit more about that example, right? Because you're talking about what they want to hear anyway, and they want to know more about what you want to say, right? Now, some people might say, yeah, but what else, what do I say when I get into the interview itself? And it's like, yes, right? Because some people say, we want to save the best for last. We want to, you know, keep something there just in case they ask me a question that I don't know what to write on. But my, 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 my argument for that is, but what if you get a question, right? No, what if you have a great uh, example that they don't ask the right, the right uh, question for? So you have some amazing example that can help them, but they didn't give you the opportunity because the right question didn't come from, right? Mm -hmm. So I always say to people, let's give the best of you first, right? I've had it in, uh, in interviews where I answered a question, okay? Or I did the elevator pitch and they get to the interview side and they say to me, oh, you've already asked that question. You've already answered that question because I gave it up front, right? And so what we're doing in the beginning on the elevator pitch people is um, leading the conversation where we'd want it to go. And when we can lead the conversation where we want to go, it turns into more of a conversation rather than it feeling like an interrogation, okay? Remember, hiring manager, two of the main things they're looking for, can you do the job and can I work with you, all right? So when you already not wasting my time, right? If you, if, you know, uh, we were talking about earlier, it's time for some of you can take up just a minute or less to make up your mind to see if this person's interesting and what I need or not, all right? That's human nature. You can't stop that. that you, you can try and uh, uh, stop yourself, but, but that's just who we are, right? And can, uh, I mean, some say two, three, some take one minute, okay? So knowing that, work on your elevator pitch and give them the best of you up front, okay? So that they're already clued in and they want to hear more about you as well. And, and I suppose uh, uh, that, you know, thinking about that, you've prepared those examples. So you're not, yes. you're not caught off, off on the hoof, as it were. You're not caught. Because yes. that can, sometimes can happen, can't it? Where you think you need to prepare that. But if you've led your conversation through that elevator pitch, so you've given them examples, which then they'll drill down on, then you're, yes. you're all right because you've prepared those examples. Yes, yes. Um, and that's, that's one of the um, worries, isn't it, about interviews of what they're going to ask me. Right, um, definitely. You've already led them into giving a certain amount of content, which they can then ask more things about. And hopefully you have done that, you know, that, well, you'll know because you've been doing that uh, research beforehand on those yeah. examples, which you've Yes. Done. So I, exactly. I like that. that that's yes. Good. And, and Molly, I want to take that one step further. The examples you're using on your elevator pitch, oh, sorry, the, the examples you used in your CV is what got you the interview in the first place. Yes. So all you're doing, and I spoke to one of my clients today, all you're doing then in the, intro, in the elevator pitch is helping to bring the words to life, give it some flavor, as you said. Yeah. right of what they already interested in anyway that got you the interview right so actually the prep work for your interview already starts from the cv yes okay because you i tell them that on the CV, you have to write this down out write it out right if teamwork's the problem what was the situation right what was my objective what did i have to do right if you have to do coursework right you know between four people that you've never met before right Okay, so that's between four people, uh, you have to do that. Now, Tamira's question is, when you say show your achievements, where exactly that goes in CV? In the about me or about my education? In my case, I don't have a lot of job experience, but I have a lot of course assignments. Great, right? Great question, Tamira, right? So on a CV, you'd have, uh, a lot of them would have a personal statement, right? Of who you are and, and uh, what you're looking for, okay? Underneath it, you'd normally have, so, so depending on how much experience you have and the way you are in your journey, most students, Molly, correct me if I'm wrong, would have the education next because that's the next, most recent thing they've done, correct? Yeah, I mean, there's different styles, aren't there? I mean, it different also, styles. After, after this webinar, I can share some styles that we have for our careers team that gotcha. uh, they'll have some, depending on whether you're quite experienced person wanting a change or you're yes. coming newly into a field. So there are different styles you can look at, which there's some tips I, I can send around. Great, but, great, yeah, great. Just as thank, an aside. Thank mm -hmm. you, right? And so when I'm talking about the achievements, you want your, your, your personal statement or your know, personal summary of who you are. 
and then just under it is where I'm talking about the achievements. Okay, think of it like your highlight section, your preview section of who you are based on what the job needs. Okay, so I'm telling you from, so, so okay, uh, for some people, uh, especially as later on when you have more experience and you start working, okay, you're gonna have different jobs, you're gonna have different experience. And what I say to people is not everything you've done is as relevant to that role, mm -hmm. right? So most CVs I see at the moment are all in chronological order. Right, and you with the most what you've done first. So you, you have your degree and what you're studying. That's great, you know, because that's where you are, right? But when I say to people is, but what if that uh, that part time job you did uh, two years ago, working in a retail shop, okay? You had some, you fixed some problems, you had win some awards, you did something there to make an impact, okay? But that's further down the first page or even on the second page if you have a second page, right? And I'm saying to people. Why are you making it difficult for the hiring manager to try and figure out from all the CVs how you can help me if you take the achievement that you've gone from the second page and put it just after your personal statement? All right. So uh, Alex's question, is it best to list your key skills achievements as bullet points or should you provide more detailed full sentences? Great question, Alex. Bullet points, right? And when I say bullet points, I'm talking about two, three sentences max, right? As a bullet point, okay? And I'm saying, tell a story. Right, and what I say to people is, you, when you talk about the problem and how uh, and the result, you're giving it context, right? You need to show the problem so I can see how bad it was, right? Before the result, if you just give me the result, I have nothing to compare with. I don't know what it was beforehand, mm. right? So I don't understand. Right? So um, uh, yes. So bullet point is good. Make it sh short and snappy. You're telling a really, really short story. Right, because all it is, people remember your CV is just to get to the interview. I was speaking to a very experienced client today that has four pages of CV, right? And I said to them, That's great, but nobody has time to read War and Peace. <laughs> okay, you have a lot of experience, but not everything you've done is relevant for each job you're applying for. So, before you start on your CV, go to the job description understand what they need, highlight some of the keywords on there and then match it to yours, right? And you want it short and snappy because we live in Instagram world now, people, right? People want information like that. No one's got time for full sentences of everything you've done, right? Now, the other thing when I talk about it, skills achievements, right? Is because I tell people all the time, don't tell me, show me, right? And what I mean by that is like, anybody can say they're hardworking, Anybody can say the attention to detail, right? But unless you show me through your examples, the achievements of the problem you solved and the result, I can see it without you telling me that your attention to detail. And guys, please, 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 if you put attention to detail on your CV, please make sure you do a spell check, okay? Because you cannot tell me that you have attention to detail and then I'm reading through as a hiring manager. One of the worst things uh, I hate is when I'm reading a CV and there's spelling mistakes or there's grammatical mistakes, right? And sometimes I, I've done it in the past as myself, right? So we're human, right? We see OCD like this. And my suggestion to people is get, get someone else in your family, get somebody else just to have a quick read through. So a different perspective can just have a read through and spell check and see if it makes sense. Okay. I suppose, I suppose it's not rushing it as well, isn't it? Making yes. sure you have enough time to do it properly. Yes. Not, uh, you know, and to look through it properly. And, yes. and I suppose you're saying that they might be able to therefore have different type of CD, C, CVs for different roles you're going for. If you've got, you're in a role where you could go one way or then could go another way, you might have different versions. Great questions. Uh, great question, Molly, right? So my, my point when I say to people is, is uh, uh, I always talk to people about having a master CV template, okay? And that's for you. That's where you can go crazy and have your five, six, seven, eight pages wherever when you, you know, very successful and everything, right? And, and you put that there, right? But when you're applying for each job, okay? And, and I'm not saying you're not reinventing the whole CV here, people, right? What you're doing is you're understanding the keywords from the company's perspective. And then you look at your master CV template and you're taking, okay, they need uh, problem solving. They need teamwork. They need, that's the key word. I can take the example of that and I've, I've put it into the key accomplishments, right? And for each job you apply for, 
make a copy of the application that you did just for that job, All right? So when I say to that is once you've made a copy and, and you're applying for different roles, obviously, right? When you apply for that role, you're putting in the key achievements relevant to that role, okay? So if you have a similar job you come up to afterwards that has similar things so that, you can use that as the baseline and then tailor the key achievements stuff accordingly, right? Your career history, your education and everything all stays the same. The only thing you're tailoring is the key achievement uh, section relevant for that job that you're applying for, mm. right? Mm. Now, I just want to tell you the, um, what's the word I'm saying to you? I just want to tell you the impact from a hiring manager's point of view. When I get a CV where it looks like they're talking directly to me rather than a generic CV that they're trying to send to everybody, right? Because a generic CV makes means I have to do work. And I don't want to work, right? I'm looking for efficiency, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So if someone gives me the keywords of things that I'm looking for, right? And the point about putting keywords that's already on the job description, people, right? Is that helps you to pass the application tracking system or ATS, right? And I just want to touch on that uh, quickly, Molly, right? An yep. application tracking system, right? It's basically, uh, 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 it's like a vetting system, right? Because some jobs have over 1,000 applications. Mm. for one job, mm. right? If it's a big company. No one's got time to review 1,000 applications. <laughs> and if they do, it's very, very quickly. Okay, again, importance of first impression, right? And telling a story there, right? So what I mean for that is what an application tracking system basically does is they fill it up with keywords, okay? And then we're saying, is, okay, I want to see all the CVs that have 80% of the keywords. Okay, and then from there, from that thousand, it might narrow down to a hundred or two hundred, right? So I say to people that also the other point about using keywords that's already in the job description as your header, your signposting, but it also helps you to beat the application tracking system, right? Mm -hmm. So it also means because remember, right? As I said before, we we want uh, my I'm looking for people that I can work with, right, and, and people that can do the job when you're speaking the same language, because you're using the same language uh, that the hiring managers are using for on the job description. Each company you will find when you go there, they have their own jargon, they have their own culture, right? If you don't need any business students in there, companies have their own culture and the way they do things, okay? The language they use is also part of the culture, right? So when you're using the language and the keywords from the job description on your CV, it makes it so much easier to see how you are already like them. Right. Again, what I'm talking about here is not just about uh, CVs, but it's understanding human nature. It's understanding marketing principles and, and, and think of the hiring manager as your customer, right? And giving them, right, your CV is bidding to say, here's me, this is what I can do, uh, coming in from a, bring me in for an interview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Put it there in the, uh, in the, uh, the post. Molly, anything else I need to cover off, please? Uh, no, I suppose there's one um, point I bring up is about um, application forms because some mm -hmm. companies use application forms still, don't they? And whether which and, and if they say I also have your CV and supporting documents, what would be the thing you have to put the most time into? <laughs> I've had oh, questions sure. like this before. Yes, um, that's great. And and and, and I have to say, uh, so if you think about it. Uh, cover letter. Let me just want to talk about cover letter. I can talk about that. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you see, so your question is the, pro, the uh, you think of the intention from the company, right? That the company is wanting to be fair to everybody, right? So the application form is so that you answer the questions based on what they need. Yeah. Right. But also it makes it fair to everybody. So it's the same questions for everybody else, right? I, I know people that avoid any companies that ask for application letters, uh, application forms, by the way, right? Indeed. So there's pros and cons. So there's pros more for the hiring team than for the, uh, the hiring team rather than for the um, uh, hiring team rather than for the candidate, okay? Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying to people, you have all your achievements and what you've done in the past already there on your CV, okay? Mm -hmm. If you're doing the application, it's a copy and paste job to show what you've done in the past based on what they need, mm -hmm. yeah. okay? Right, and they'll ask for your CV anyway. That's fine, and put it in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
And there's um and a, and a comment for um from Themaris um yeah. about the cover letter. Yeah. Cover letter. I love cover letters. Okay. <laughs> now uh to, to answer cover letters, Themaris, what I want to say to you guys is I'm a big believer, okay, that uh, you know, I, I, I like to think of a cover letter as a uh, as an appetizer to a meal, okay. And what I mean by that is your CV needs to do the heavy lifting. Okay, your CV needs to uh, 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 need it is the main course. So it needs to to stand on its own, right? Now, there, I, I, in the past, when I used to be lazy and I didn't know what I know now, I used to have a one size fits all CV to apply for jobs, and I try to tailor the cover letter for each individual job, mm. right? Here's the problem with that method. Okay, if there's a hundred is if there's a hundred CVs for one job with a uh, average of two pages each. That's 200 pages some poor person has to review and read through, mm. okay? If every single one of them had a cover letter, that's 300 pages someone has to do just for that one job, mm. right? And figure it out, right? So what I say to people, and you will see when you some recruiters, some recruiters don't even ask for a cover letter, right? They don't even ask for a cover letter. And so what I say to people all the time is, your CV has to stand on its own, okay? Some companies ask for a cover letter, but not, right? Your CV is the main cost, has to stand on its own. But if they ask for a cover letter, it's an opportunity to show what you can do for them as well, right? And show a different personality and what you can do for them, right? So the cover letter, uh, so I'm, I'm very big on personal development. So this pitch idea that I, I did, I learned from one of the courses I did with uh, Bob Proctor online, okay? Personal development. And he did this to help him pitch to businesses. And I was like, wow, a cover letter is basically the same thing. How do you pitch to business what you can do for them, right? So when I speak to people, cover letter, people only has three paragraphs because that's all you need, right? The first one reminds them of the job you're applying for, okay? And also something about the company that you like, right? So for example, right? Hi there, I'm uh, or dear sir, madam, or dear recruitment team at uh, uh, at company X, right? I'm applying for the uh, you know the administration intern. I'm, I'm I'm applying for the sales intern. I'm paying for the uh, marketing junior, whatever role, right? So make sure that you're putting in there so they know that okay, so this is the role I need to apply for, right? I'm applying for this role with your company, right? Do some research about the company, okay? What do what are they doing? What's in the news? What what what? Uh, look at the mission statement. What do they see about them? Find something that interests you and resonates with you. Okay. So from the from the other side, I'm looking at the couple of this side, right? So this is the role they're applying for, and this is something they already know about the company. Right now, paragraph two, okay, is the is is what uh, no one does. The average people doesn't do, and paragraph two give value up front, right? And when I say from that is do some analysis, do some, uh, uh, you know, do some analysis about the company, some recommendations and things to talk about this, right? Now, for example, I helped a lady out in Spain in Barcelona, okay? To, uh, she was doing a first ever interview, uh, uh, um, the first job application for an American pharmaceutical out in Barcelona, right? So we were talking together and I said to her, right? have a look at the, uh, it's American Pharmaceuticals, I said, have a look at what the job does, all right, uh, the company. So one of, the, one of their uh, values is advance the quality of life. So we mentioned that in the top to say, yeah, I admire the company's uh, mission statement to advance the quality of life, right? Second paragraph, we talked about, uh, you know, in the midst of COVID, okay? I see COVID as, a, uh, as an opportunity American pharmaceutical to to uh, to help help uh, to align with their mission statement, advance the quality of life by helping with tests, vaccines, and uh, you know uh, 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 to help advance the quality of life. Right, right. So we, we you know we highlighted that for a pharmaceutical, the current situation for them can help them. Okay, to open new markets. Right. And, uh, and uh, open to market segments and, and a new R&D developments as well, okay? Because COVID is completely new for everybody. But from a pharmaceutical company, one of their questions is how can I make money out of this, right? So you're just 
connecting the dots between mission statement, what's currently happening in the world, and the potential for the future, right? That's just analysis of bringing it all together. So when you told me that, right, and oh, she got the job, by the way, one application, one interview, she got the job, right? And this is what I'm trying to say. You're making them to see, wow, you give them value up front. Because some people say, yeah, but if I give all my ideas away, they're just going to steal it. And then, you know, they're going to leave me behind. And I say to people, yeah, but you have all these ideas, but but they don't know that, uh, you know, if you keep all these ideas and you get the interview, those ideas are, are useless, mm. right? Remember, you want to show them how you can help them by giving value up front, right? And then I'm saying value is, is analysis, right? Connecting what's happening in the real world to what they need or connecting their, uh, you know, I'm just giving examples here, so they're extensive, connecting um, uh, the mission statement to what's happening in the world or, or a new product they're coming in, but do some analysis, people, okay? And then the third paragraph, right? It's basically saying to them, it's basically pointing them to go look at your CV, right? I mean, I'm confident that my CV will show me why I would be a great, uh, uh, great candidate for this role. Thank you very much for your consideration and I look forward to hearing from you, right? Short, sweet and easy, right? What I see sometimes from people that are not very confident, they try to repeat what's already on their CV, right? And I say to you, but why are you repeating yourself twice? Put it in one place and point them to go there. This is what the third paragraph does, okay? So Thamiris, I hope that helps to answer your question about cover letter. Guys, again, this time is for you. We've got about seven minutes left before I have to let you go. Let me know what else questions you have, right? Because you got me on here for seven minutes, or six in a minute, right? <laughs> Molly, anything else you uh, uh, you can uh, you, you want to ask? I mean, if anyone else has got any other questions, I suppose something around the C the interviews. Um, what about something that's a tighter interview, like more like a vetting interview, a short interview? Would you deal with that differently? So, so, of... so, so great question. And what I would say to you is, is whatever the type of interview is, or you're still doing the same thing, you same know, thing. and, and yeah. show the best of you first, because we don't know how the interviews are, right? Now, the other thing I want to say to people, right? Interviews, uh, um, what do you call it? It's not a natural state because we don't do much of it, right? So I always say to people, just practice. Practice doing interview. You know, my dad said to me before, even if you don't like the job or you don't think it's a great job and they offer you the interview, take it. Because the more you practice, the more you get better, better at it, right? The more you practice and, and put this in there, right? Because we can write all these stories out as much as we can, but if we're not getting interviews, we don't practice enough, right? And you know, the other thing as well, just talking about it before. So before uh, Molly and I came on this one, there was a bit of a crazy moment where I can't find the link to join and what's going on, right? It was in my spam folder, so that was my fault, obviously, right? Uh -huh. Right, but 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 here, the lesson learned from that case. Most interviews at the moment are over on Zoom, right? With everything mm -hmm. happening, Zoom, Teams, or whatever, okay? So guys, before the interview itself, test your technology, right? <laughs> Make sure, because the last thing you want to do when you're already nervous is you're going to an interview and the mouse is not working or the screen's frozen and you're sweating profusely and all things. Oh my gosh, it's terrible, right? But not like I'd never done it before or anything, but <laughs> it has, so I tell you, right? So test your technology. The other thing mm -hmm. as well is make sure if you're at home, have a glass of water, right? Have a bottle of water, whatever it is, right? Now it's 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 it, what you're trying to do is buy some time, right? So if someone asks you a question, writing a cross statement on your CV statements, okay? So right, so Alex asked the question, a profile statement, right? So profile statement, what I would say is, uh, okay, profile statement, Alex. Let me know what kind of job are you applying for, Alex? Product management. Okay. Do you uh, just quickly? Do you have an experience, yes or no, as a product manager? Tapping up out here. How we doing? Transitioning from CS. So you're transitioning. Okay. So so uh, as a uh, customer service manager to product management, right? Right. So you already have manager, although you haven't managed product in the past, right? So. You can say, uh, uh, you, you can call yourself an experienced manager uh, looking to transition uh, uh, manager uh, with X years of experience 
looking to uh, use my uh, looking to transition into product manager. All right. Or uh, an experienced manager with X years of experience looking to transition into, uh, and when I say X years of experience, uh, uh, Alex, you want to talk about the different industries that you worked in. Okay. So for myself, for example, I would on mine says an experienced project manager, right? Or experienced uh, manager, uh, uh, you know, or an experienced analyst, right? With over 20 years of experience, and I list the industries, I would say an experienced uh, project manager with over 20 years experience in uh, utilities, in um, uh, pensions, in insurance, right? So, and if you have industry experience that you're going to, so you have your customer service and your insurance. If you have insurance as one of the jobs you've done in the past, you put that first, okay? Always give the, be give the best of you to what they need, right? Looking to transition to product uh, management, right? Now, when I say that, you talk about the amount of years, okay? Give them an example of what you've done in the past, right? So I, I will say to people, give them an example of product, man of product manager, right? And you talk about some of the things they need you to do, right? Give them an example of what you've done in the past that's relevant for what they need, and then talk about your experience and, and um, education and what else you have in there, right? So it's, I want to see from your opening statement what you've done right? That's relevant for what you can do for me, transferable skills, all those sort of things. I want to see uh, also your education, right? That's relevant for what I need. Okay. So if you've done a product management course, that's more interesting to me than you've done a degree in uh, history. If you're going from product, ma product management, the history degree is great, but it's not relevant for me for what I need. Okay. So you want to think about your, um, your opening statement, right? Is talking about two or three things in there that's relevant for what they need, okay? And the last bit, everything is uh, in there. The last statement is looking for. Now, when I say what, uh, the first couple of statements is looking previous and what you've done before, the last statement is looking for, looking for. And the looking for should align with what the company needs. That makes sense, right? So in my previous roles, I've always looked for pro process improvement, right? So looking for a great opportunity. To, uh, to, to, to help improve project processes and, uh, and optimize project delivery, for example, right? What I'm looking for aligns with what the company needs before I talk about key achievements. Does that help, Alex? Cool, brilliant. Thank you. We've got one more minute left, Molly. So I don't know if there's anything else we need to talk about. I think we've covered a lot of material. Yes. Um, it's been really interesting and uh, some great questions as well. I'm, I'm yes, thank you guys. Thank, thank you for the questions. Thank the audience for being so in interactive and uh, asking the questions. It's been great. Um, no, I mean, we've got the, to the end of our session really now, and I think we've covered a lot. Uh, we're rec we have recorded this. It is recording at the moment. Yes. And so what I'll do is uh, follow-up email i'll send the first recording from james's first session in all the autumn What's that um, first, and please? then and then this one as well so you'll have both recordings so if you haven't because obviously it was a it was a, a recap the, uh, the the beginning bit so yeah. you'll see the full one from the first one in all in the autumn yes and also um you know connect up with james on online he's on linkedin yeah. um and you know it's been really interesting so i hope everyone's um Again, ask the questions they wanted to or bits that they were interested in were covered. Um, it's very comprehensive, James. Have you frozen there? Oh, no. That's <laughs> um, how I was it's thinking. been really good, really interesting. And uh, thanks for coming a second time and, and giving your time. Um, thank you very much, yeah. guys. And, 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 and I just wanted to uh, uh, say as well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for making sure. Now, in terms of what I do here, yes, I want to you know, give my time, give back to you, because I was that student once upon a time finishing university, and I didn't have a clue what the hell I wanted to do, right? Which is why my career journey has taken me full circle, and now I'm helping others, right? So, you know, most of the people I help is, is experienced career professionals. You know, I've helped students in the past, right? And everything like that. But, but uh, uh, you know, I, I work with executives, you know, uh, directors, and everything in there and, and that's the type of people i help on a daily basis right but here's the one thing i want to take away give you guys to take away with you right the level and complexities of the problems you help to solve increases your value so what i'm trying to say is find the problems wherever you are 
when you can solve them and you can show people the impact of that helps you to improve your confidence but also helps you to move up the move up the chain as well so what we're talking about here is what i'm trying to say is well we're talking about for cvs and resumes it also helps you to remember your value your worth and what you can do based on facts and figures because this is how you made an impact right that is what you can use when you can go for performance reviews and show this is what I did and there's the impact to the company and everything. This can help you get promotions, okay? Because this is all about knowing your story, knowing your value and knowing how to communicate it out there, right? And as Molly said, I'm, uh, I'm, on, uh, I'm on LinkedIn as well. And I uh, just wanted to let you know, I'm gonna send a survey out later. Please, please, please fill out the survey. Let me know, uh, you know, like I said, you know, no one's perfect here, guys. We're always on this journey of improvement, right? So give me feedback on what you enjoyed. Give me some feedback on what you would like to hear more of. And, and so I can improve it for the next time I do this, okay? And as I said, I'm on LinkedIn. I'll send you my LinkedIn profile there. I also have a free career group as well with people from all over the world. Come and join, come and see what I do. Uh, and just connect and say hello, right? And, and answer them because uh, uh, the last thing as well is networking, 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 right? It's not about what you know sometimes, sometimes it's about how, who you know. So you need to learn to play the game, right? The types of jobs, right? Alex, if you're going into product management, go on to LinkedIn, go and connect with people that are already doing product management jobs, right? And I just wanted to add to that, right? When you're networking, build a relationship first. What I mean by that, right? Go and look, make it, it's not about you, it's about them. So go look at their profile. See something you like about their profile on LinkedIn and mention it. When you're connecting with people, send them a connection invite with the message, okay? Because when you write the message, you're more likely to get connected with them, right? I always send a message when I want to connect with people. And guess what? I get 99% success rate when I write the message, right? Not yeah. everyone's want to connect with you, that's fine. But if you're looking to go into product management, you know, find something in common. Like so one of my, uh, one of my uh, clients is in Germany. Uh, she's from Peru, living in Germany. When she looks for people that's looking to do UX design like what she does, she checks out this resume and she, even some that are learning Spanish. She's Spanish, she speaks Spanish. I'm uh, sorry, Peruvian speaks Spanish. Hey, I see that you're, uh, you know, she writes the message, say, I see that you're, uh, uh, I see that you're a, you know, UX designer and also know that you're learning Spanish, right? I speak Spanish too, and I'm, I'm looking to get into UX design, right? And said, would love to connect. Have a great week, yeah. right? Right? Someone's taking the time to check out my profile. Someone's taking the time to find out a little bit about me. It's not about you. I know you guys need jobs and you guys that build a relationship first. When people like you, when people get to know you, when people understand that you're interested in them, they're more likely to help you. Yes. Right? Because it's, it's, you know, I see on LinkedIn, so, oh, I just graduated, I'm looking for a job, please help. Help yourself first, people. Build the connections, go and connect, to, go and speak to people. I know it's scary. I'm, a, I'm, I'm an introvert at heart, so I know it's scary, right? But if you don't try new things, you will never get anywhere, right? You'll always get what you always done. Sure, there's a quote somewhere about that somewhere as well. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's a good good ending yes. topic. It sort of links up to last week's with Maria yes. as well, and the LinkedIn piece is yes. totally there to connect, yes. make the most of those networks. We've got yes. a big alumni group as well um, from go. university. You can go on to the Brooks University website, um, LinkedIn profile, and look up alumni who are in different areas, uh, different companies, different spaces, and then they're all connected to Brooks. So that's a great place for LinkedIn as well. So that's a, that's a good um, end tip coming from you, James. It's, um, you know, building and finding out where you want to be and making, making those connections and people can, if something comes up, maybe tell you about a, a vacancy that's come up in the company. So it's just building and expanding those networks. Yes, right. <laughs> and, I, and I'll also put in your um, your, yes. your LinkedIn connect, you know, your um, profile link for, for the email. Yes, most definitely. With, you with, know, with looking forward to connecting yeah. with some of you guys. And, and you know, I, I wish you all the best of luck in your job yeah. search. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you and again for, for giving your time, James. It's been really lovely getting to know you and, and to have this second session and really interesting. So, brilliant. You, you know, um, uh, I hope the rest of your evening goes well and have a good evening, everyone. Yes. And yes. um, we're, I'm sure we'll all talk again soon. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Take care. Okay. Bye, bye guys. Bye. -bye.